Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly. At C A C H E F L Y dot com. Three, two, one. This is Twit Special number 183, recorded New Year's Eve. Mad Science. Now, the last time I took this thing off, it spontaneously erupted. It was <laughs> like I. Was... Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it's not going to happen again. Happy New Year! It's 2014. All up and down. It's a very nice kiss from the fiance, the married couple. They're staying well away from each other. Juniper Jan, hi. Hi. Where are you from? Mad Science. Is that a website, madscience.com? Uh, madscience.com is our big website, so anyone from all over the world can visit that and find locations near them. Our specific office is Mad Science of Mount Diablo. Well, that's neat. So do you do courses for kids or fun projects for kids, that kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, we do after-school programs, um, assemblies like this, but with, you know, more children in the audience. Do you, do you need uh, subjects? Because we have two small subjects. Right I do here. see that we have them here, which is great. All right. Um, we also do camps and in-class workshops. And How fun. Programs. How fun. How did you get involved in this? Um, I was a part-time preschool teacher, and I was... It's always fun in school if you can have things... Do explosive. Exactly. I was looking for more work, and another uh, another teacher worked with Mad Science, and she suggested I check them out. And I've been with them for um, over five years now. Do you also go into schools? Do schools bring you in? As you said, assemblies, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Assemblies, in-class workshops, after-school classes. And it's really more than just making colors and fun stuff. It's really to get people excited about science, right? Um, definitely. Our goal is to spark imaginative learning. So we want to really get them excited about science, let them know that science is fun, and get them asking questions and wanting to learn more. Do you guys like science? Yes. yes. Oh. They've been to your school, so you've seen this before. Don't tell us what's going to happen. Okay, I want it to be a surprise. So what are we going to do first, Jen? Um, so I've brought our crazy chemistry show. So this is a show that we typically do as an assembly. And for this show, we typically tell a story to the children about an alien who crashed outside of our lab and needed some help. And then at the end of the story, after doing all of the experiments with the storyline, we typically have time for the children to ask questions about the science that they saw. We let them know that, of course, it's just a fun story, that it's all chemical reactions that they're seeing. Um, so today we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to speed it up a little bit. So I'm going to kind of mention the story that I might tell the kids, but I'm also going to let everyone know kind of the science behind what you're seeing here. This is great. Okay, where do we start? In our story, the first thing that happens, our alien Blobby, we bring him into the lab and ask him if he needs help. And the first thing he needs help with is making some more body because he actually loses part of his body in the crash. Terrible. Not as big as he used to be. And, of course, we say we'll help him out. We use a chemical that looks a lot like... Looks like dish soap. A little bit like dish or, soap. Yeah. Or even maybe sometimes water. Yeah, it's water with some suds. Yeah. I like, I like to always point out to children that it is never safe to think that something's water just because it looks like water. You wouldn't drink that, would you? Never would you drink Oh, that. would that make you sick? It is a chemical called PVA. So polyvinyl alcohol, definitely not water. But of course, it, it is a little bit slippery. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Of course, blobby. It's okay that I touched it. I'm not going to die. Touching, just not safe for eating. So we need to add just a little bit of paint to blobby. And then we have our final, our third chemical, which is sodium borate. And sodium borate is just borax soap that's been dissolved in water. Okay. And so we add a few squirts of the sodium borate. Reaction, what kind of reaction is this going to create well, here? It's going to create Blobby's new body. <laughs> of course, that's the scientific term. So as soon as we've got this in here, it's getting a little clogged from the borax crystals, so we just got to shake it up. And this takes actually quite a bit of mixing. I'm going to mix it as quickly as I can. So you have long string polymers in this vinyl, polyvinyl alcohol? Vinyl alcohol, exactly, is a polymer. 
and the sodium borate is actually cross-linking the polymer. So it's going to take the little strings and make them bigger and bigger and bigger, and pretty soon it's going to get gooey? Well, what it is, it will get gooey, but the strings are already long. What it's doing is it's connecting those strings together. So if you were a string and I was a string, and we started holding hands, right. that's what's happening in here. And my girlfriend would kill me. <laughs> All right, she's stirring it. She's stirring up blobby. Almost stirred. Take quite a bit. Oh, it's getting gooey. Oh, there we go. Kids love that kind of stuff, don't they? Now, is, is, are these kind of chemicals commonly available, or are they specialty chemicals you can only get in, you know? Um, or actually, you can get at the store. Um, the polyvinyl alcohol is pretty commonly available, but I think you have to order it. I don't know of any store. Maybe online you could order it. I don't know of any store that actually carries it. Wow, look at that. You created made goop. Body. Which we also sometimes call slime. So it is a cross-linked polymer, and it's nice and stretchy. And in our story, we take some of our new body, and we just add it to his. Old we got some very big eyes in the front row there. Creating a wonderful blobby body. Love the blobby body. Now, I'm going to set that aside. And I've actually brought cups with lids, so we can give them. Out at the end. Anybody want a blobby body? Uh, you can you can sip it, uh, enjoy it, uh, and uh, 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 huh? Does it? Does yours dry out? Yeah. yeah. It sometimes dry out, especially if you don't keep the lid on it. So we've got more for you today, okay? Oh, are you in luck? All right. So the next part of our story, after we help Blobby make, can some I touch blobby, blobby body? Oh, go ahead. Ooh, it's like Jello. Ooh. Uh, uh. I'm trouble. Watch out. Blobby actually asks us to help him make some more blood. Blood? Because when he lost his body. He lost, lost some blood. Lost blood. Sure. Blood loss is a common uh, side effect of body loss. Of course, I don't know how to make blood. Not at all. Me neither. You need some, you know, like blood cells and marrow and stuff. But Blobby explains to me that alien blood is not like human oh, blood. Oh, it's not like human blood. And he goes through my lab and he brings back some chemicals. I'll set these up here so everybody can Use. see. Use these. They make chemical blood. He brings two chemicals that both look quite a bit like water. One is actually phenothaline, which is an acid-base indicator. And the other is actually sodium hydroxide. It turned purple. And so we create our alien blood. Wow, or wine. Or wine. It looks a bit like wine. Can I drink that? You definitely do not want to drink this. Definitely do not want to drink That's this. But after he's got all the blood he needs, we've actually got some leftover. Those were both clear chemicals. They were clear chemicals, wow. and the acid-base indicator, phenothaline, changes color when it is in contact with a base. So it was saying, ah, there's a base here. I'm going to change color. There's a base here. The base is the opposite of acid. Opposite of an acid, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So to disguise this alien blood, because you would never want to leave alien blood lying around on Earth, to disguise the alien blood, all we have to do is add an acid. Oh, wow, and now it's normal pH. Look at that, she balanced it, and it's no longer bloody. And the acid that I've added here is just vinegar. Oh, it's acetic acid. Yeah, it's just common, ordinary white vinegar. Um, and if we were to add quite a bit more base, this could change. Could go back and forth. Pink again, it could go back and forth, but our cup's full. So I'm That's cool. That the side. And at the next part of our story... Blobby actually asks us to help him make a new hand. Wow. Blobby's he, very demanding. He lost his body, he lost his blood, and he even lost one of his hands. Oh, no. So That probably was tied blood. to the blood loss, I would guess. Now, of course, Blobby's hands were not the same as ours. No. All we had was human gloves to give him the shape of his hand. Right. So we actually just tied off one of the fingers. Blobby had four fingers, oh, not perfect. five. So we just tied it off. Okay. And then we took... Two part expanding foams. And we just mix these two chemicals together. Ooh. And you should start noticing a color change. That's actually one of our clues that we've seen a chemical reaction. We have different clues we like to talk about with the children. One clue is a chemical uh, color change, one clue is a temperature change, gas or bubbles being produced or something entirely new being created. So in our body, we created something new. In our blood, we definitely saw a color change. Here we're seeing a bit of a color change, and this is also slightly exothermic. That means that One heat couple. is being produced exactly. Now we just pour this into the glove. 
<laughs> Blobby. And assemblies. I like to kind of I like to kind of tease the children, um, exclaiming that somehow I have not brought enough of these. Chemicals. He's not going to have a hand. He's going to have three have fingers. And I definitely haven't brought enough. And I'm I'm very distraught about this. Hate it when that happens. I'd really like to show everybody this. Yeah. Um, Wait a minute. I just don't know what. Wait a minute. Do. It's expanding. And eventually, juniper. It expands. Oh my golly! Look the hand. That's exactly right. So this is actually this is actually polymerizing. I'm guessing that the name expanding foam has some clue there. Exactly, exactly. So it's polymerizing. It's making those long chains, but it's also producing gas. And as it produces gas, oh. it expands. Oh, it's just like a nice head of beer there. Ooh. And it expands, I think, about 30 times its original size. That could be useful. It's used a lot. Kind of like me. <laughs> home insulation or fiberglass sure, boats. Pump it into something. Um, yeah, yeah okay. so it's used a lot because it can expand, take the shape of anything you're putting it into. <laughs> It's really lightweight. That's why it's good for boats. And it's lightweight because of all the gas that's produced. Maybe, so is it going to harden? It will harden. In about another minute, it's going to slow down. It's going to kind of stop growing. And you're going to notice it's starting to get stickier. It's going to start sticking to my popsicle stick as I try to plop it off. And in about five minutes, it should be fairly hard. And 15 minutes, it should be <coughs> pretty firm. You can notice it's already starting. Yeah, it's slow. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Ooh, gooey. Ugh. The and kids probably that's love this that's stuff. All that I can kids love gooey and yeah. They really do, and it's it's really exciting because I don't tell them that it's two part expanding foam before I do it, so they're not expecting they're not it to expand. That's cool. Exactly. So that's a lot of fun. It's really me. great. Um, key is always to use disposable things, as you can see that it's not going to come out of these cups we're gonna set that kind of off to the side so we're gonna let blobby's hand harden you can put it over here that's fine yeah that'll be fine all right we'll let that harden and if you remind me we'll come back to it. let's just put that out on the curb and see what anybody what people say <laughs> so at this point in the story after we've helped him with his body his blood and his hand we ask him what else we can help him with and he says that the reason he came to earth was to get a gift for his mom. And the reason he crashed was because the gift would not fit inside of his spaceship. Oh, no. So he had actually bungee corded the gift onto the wing of his spaceship. That's silly. And that made his spaceship a little <laughs> No kidding. It yeah. Balanced. That caused him to crash. So he asks us if we can help him shrink the gift he's gotten for his mom. So I get my heavy duty gloves on because I don't want to shrink the gloves that I'm wearing. And I use another chemical that looks a lot like water. Again, pointing out to children I'm that we should never, never, no. never, no. never no. think something's water just because it looks like water. This is actually a chemical called acetone, and it is the main ingredient in fingernail polish remover. Uh -oh. So we are going to shrink Blobby's gift for his mom now. I have to oh warn you all, God, this can be a bit gross. Oh. <laughs> wow, look at that. Holy moly. That can't be, that can't be good. <laughs> Yuck. Did you get to take this home too? No. no. I smell the nail polish remover, yeah. Yeah, you should be able to smell it. It gets pretty strong. You know, it's interesting because it's a styro, it's a styrofoam head. There's not a lot of material in there, is there? There's really not. That's why we're able to shrink it this way. We've actually released all of the gas that was trapped in it. Just like this is a foam, and we were adding the gas when we created it. Now we've released all of the gas, and that styrofoam head can now fit into my hands. It won't stay in my hands very well because it's pretty gooey. But it's small enough to fit in the palm of my hands now with all of the gas released. Should be starting to firm up a bit, yep. 
All right, so I'm just going to get some of this extra goo. Put this out on the uh, lunch table, see if anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a little bit like meringue. It, it looks very tasty. All right. And now, wow. after we have helped him with all of these things, we ask him if there's anything else we can help him with. Well, we've made a hand for him. We've given him a new body. We made blood. We shrunk his present for his mom. What more can we do? Exactly. He said no, that there was nothing else that we could help him yeah. with. But, but he wanted to share some things with us. Oh, a little alien chemistry. He wanted to share some things with us. And he asked us if we had ever seen a genie. No. Of course, we had not. But he had actually brought his genie with him. So he went out to the spaceship. He got his genie. And he taught us how to get his genie out of the bottle. Now, I do need to put safety gloves on. I'm going to be using 30% hydrogen peroxide, which is not really good for touching with your skin. So I just get my. I think this is going to be like the elephant toothpaste we made, isn't it? Uh, a little bit, no? Not quite. You've made elephant toothpaste? Well, it goes by a different name. We'll get to that. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, so the way to get a genie out is to first offer him some food, which is actually manganese dioxide. Oh, genies love manganese dioxide. And then we give him his juice. One of these is water. The other is the 30% hydrogen. Is this going to be violently exothermic? It is extremely exothermic. Uh -oh. <laughs> and what it does, the manganese dioxide actually acts like a catalyst and speeds up the decomposition of the hydrogen peroxide. Here comes the genie. Into oxygen and water vapor. So it's actually the water vapor. So that's just harmless water vapor there. Oh, my goodness. Goodness. Holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> but it is, it is extremely exothermic, so you don't it's ever hot. want to touch the bottom of the flask right now. To move it, you can carefully... So it broke down the uh, hydrogen peroxide into its components of water and oxygen. Exactly. That's cool. Exactly, because hydrogen peroxide will decompose on its own, but it goes very, very slowly at room temperature. So it's just a catalyst. It speeds up the reaction. Um, so that's going to be going to lead us in to our mm. kind of finale here, where Blobby taught us how to make alien fireworks. Alien fireworks. Now, these alien fireworks often do go by the name of elephant toothpaste. Very similar. So some of you may already know what to expect here. Again, we're going to use 30% hydrogen peroxide. Right. And just for effect, we'll use color. You don't That's much it. stronger than the hydrogen peroxide you have under the counter, and they're much the same. stronger. What you're going to get um, for home use is, I think, 3%, and beauty supply is maybe about 8%. Concentration is everything in chemistry. Definitely. Now a little, little food coloring. All right, we've got some blue food coloring. Special ingredient here. This is dish soap. <laughs> she does it with more panache than I did. Add our final ingredient. This is our potassium iodide. So the potassium iodide is just going to be a catalyst like our manganese dioxide was. So again, we're going to be breaking our hydrogen peroxide down into water and oxygen. But this time, we have soap in the mixture. It's going to foam up a little bit. So it will probably foam up a little bit. We want to make sure to have it right here in the center. <laughs> that is great. Alien fireworks, everybody. Wow. For some reason, ours hit the ceiling. I don't know if we had, maybe we had too small an opening. <laughs> um, it's it's going to depend on a lot of things. It's going to depend on how much chemicals you put in, the shape of the bottle, and the shape of the opening. All of those things are going to um, That's awesome. determine what happens. And I've seen the ones that go up and hit the ceiling. I think they're a lot of fun. But being that this is also an exothermic reaction, it creates a lot of heat. We, we typically perform it in, this in front of a room full of children. Um, so we like to keep it nice and secure here on the table. Juniper Jen, you're so much fun. The kids must love this when you come here. And we're gonna get, are we going to get Blobby home? Uh, Blobby does leave after this, but then he actually gives me a call. He calls you. Which is, I, I mean, I'm really surprised by that because I had no idea he would have a phone. But he calls me and he apologizes deeply for leaving his belly button lint in our bathroom at the lab. It's kind of gross, but I say I'll just throw it away. Yeah. 
He tells me you can't throw it away. Oh, no. Can't throw it away. It wouldn't be safe. Oh. Because alien belly button lint. Dangerous. Is actually extremely flammable. Oh, no. On Earth, we would call this stuff flash cotton. Oh. Also goes by the name of gun cotton. Oh, boy. Um, or nitrous cellulose. Yeah. So I'm going to get my safety. Name flash cotton or gun cotton. I don't want to make my underpants out of it. <laughs> right? Am I crazy? You would not want to make your underpants out of this, no. And of course, I always like to have a safety warning for the children that only grown-ups should be using lighters. Right. I do have my safety tongs to keep us all safe here. And if we all count to three, we'll light it. Ready? One, One two, three. Happy New <laughs> That is dangerous belly button lint. Wow, that's so much fun. And people could find out more. Is it only uh, San Francisco Bay Area or? No, no. It's actually a big international company. So it's in other countries. Um, it's all over the United States. So if you just search for Mad Science or go to madscience.org, that's going to take you to the main website where you can find your own area. If you're here in the Bay Area, you can go to mountdiablo.madscience.org to get straight to us. That's great. Mount Diablo. Yeah, you don't get on the plane, do you? Not with these things. <laughs> you have to pick them up where you arrive. What would this be for, young lady? Wow, look at when that's hardened, it's done. Yeah, yeah, it's quite hardened. You can see that here at the. Um, the glove is done. The glove as well. Oh, it's a little. This is still a little soft. It's a little soft, so it might not break off quite as easy. But we can usually just pull it right down. Share that with your brother. No, don't eat it. You're gonna rip. Can he rip that? Uh, oh, maybe maybe your brother should get the hand. If he's strong enough, he can rip it. It's safe. It is safe. Once it is dry, this is still a little bit squishy, so it's kind of sticky. Probably let this dry more before. Um, I'll take that one home myself. It. But yeah, once it's dry, it's safe for skin contact. How fun! Thank you so much, Mad Scientist Juniper Jen, for a lovely demonstration. Now you have to clean it all up. I do, but that's not a problem.